Well, now we're well into uh, the back end. In fact, we're only a month off Christmas. Horrendous. Uh, I thought I'd have a look at this piking business. So I'm just going to go through the gear which I've, which I've assembled and hopefully it will be adequate for the purpose. It seems the two things crucial to fishing for pike is one, don't let the pike swallow the bait. That is absolutely lethal for the pike. There's lots of arguments about should you strike when you first see the rattle on your rod end? Should you wait? How long do you wait? Do you wait until it's swimming away with the bait? Do you count to ten? The whole I've heard, I've heard everything on the bank, and uh, it's a, it's a judgment thing. When they first pick up the bait, you can, or when they first come across it, they sort of nudge it about, and I watched them doing it. But you can tell so when it picks it up, and you get that tug on the end of the rail. You should strike then. If you miss it, it doesn't matter. If you leave it and when you get the fish in, you found that the the hook is down through the entrance into the uh, digestive tract from the mouth, especially if it's a treble. There's no way you're going to get that out without killing the fish. And even if you leave it in there, then uh, the fish chances are it will be severely damaged. So uh, that's to be avoided at all costs. Nevertheless, it does unfortunately occasionally happen and uh, you need the, the gear to deal with that so that's one thing which I'll, I'll mention. The second thing when you get this pike on the bank it's all to do with confidence. Ideally you should, you should go with somebody who knows what they're doing it's alright if you go pike fishing and you catch a little four or five pound pike. Handling that isn't a major problem. But supposing your first pike is 15 pounds plus. When you get it on the bank it's like an all in wrestling match. If you don't know what you're doing. Uh, and it's all very well these people with scarred knuckles <laughs> saying you don't need gloves to handle pike. All I can say is that it gives the confidence to handle a pike and handle it well, which can only be good for the pike, which is what it's about. So I definitely use a glove. Anyway, let's have a look at what I've got. The first thing you need is a decent landing net. This is a typical carp net, which you see on the riverbank. And it's good for carp in that it has a, a sort of soft, fine mesh. The problem with it is when you get a pike in a net like this and you get up on the bank and they start rolling around in the net, which they tend to, the trebles get caught in this and the pipe ends up like a mummy wrapped up in this net and uh, there's all sorts of evidence on <laughs> in this net where you've got to cut the trebles out so the whole thing ends up with masses of holes in and of course it takes a long time to do this Meanwhile, a pike is becoming more and more stressed. So whilst this is all ideal for large carp, uh, it's no good for pike at all. So this is the net I've bought for the river pike from my local river, the River Swale. It's a spoon-shaped 
net, which is ideal. I mean, it's not the easiest thing to carry, but it uh, it's ideal for what I want. And it's two feet six inches from front to back. I don't know what that is in new in metric. If you're going for a lake pike, big lake pike, sort of 25, 35, 40 pounds, then this is really isn't big enough. And you can get them up to three feet across. If you use a smaller net, then uh, you catch a large pike, then it ends up folded up or bent inside the, inside the net, which is uh, which is not an ideal situation for a pike, it can easily become damaged. But the nice thing about this is it has this rubberized mesh which travels does not become caught in. So a very, very worthwhile investment. So we've caught the pike and uh, we brought it up on the bank. And we need an adequate unhooking mat. Most unhooking mats you have, we have for barbel or chub or the river fishing are, are too small for uh, pike so I've got this uh, larger unhooking mat which comes in a, a sort of canvas carrying case It also has a large zip around it so that if I want to wear a pike then uh, I can zip the pike up in this uh, for weighing it without the pike being bent in any way so the pike can remain straight. So you can see there it's a substantial size and will take a large pike easily. If I want to wear a pike, then I can just zip zip the, the pike inside the bag and uh, use those handles there to wait. So it does this uh, dual roll unhooking mat and a sling for weighing the pike. And then you can see the zip goes right around the, the outside. So the pike's on the unhooking mat and this is where confidence comes in and I always wear a glove. When you put your fingers under the, the pike's gill cover, yeah, the gill rakers, part of the gill system, are quite sharp and uh, will cut into the skin on the back of your hand. So, it's all about confidence, this business. This is a butcher's glove. It's Kevlar and stainless steel, and it's designed to prevent cuts with a knife. But as you can see, it's got a mesh to it, which is not what protects you against sharp needle-like objects like Pike's teeth. So I've got a, a very soft leather gardening glove which gives me the confidence to handle a pike safely, hopefully without damaging it. So with this glove on I can slide my hand under the, the gill cover of the pike confidently. If you don't do that, the chances are that you'll, 
you can get your hand around one of the gill arches, which is, you can tell what they are, they're bright pink. These are the, have the gills attached to them. And they're sort of bony, and it's, if the pike struggles when that happens, and you're not confident, then the chances are that you'll snap one of these gill arches, and they're very rich in a blood supply, and they'll start bleeding profusely. In fact, the pike probably die from loss of blood. And quite often you see photographs of people holding pike up, and the blood is just pouring down the sides, where obviously a gill arch has been broken, which is lethal for the pike. So when you're sliding your hand under the gill cover, it's important that you don't have one of the gill arches trapped between your hand and the gill cover. You only have the gill cover there, so this gives me the confidence to do that. So the pike's in the, look, on the unhooking mat. You've got your glove on, you've got to get these trebles out. So you've got the pike on its back, one hand under the gill cover, mouth wide open, and you need a good pair of forceps. I find that surgical forceps don't have the, the strength, or maybe I don't have the strength in my, in my grip. So this is a, these are very powerful. You can buy these on at most. Uh, in fact, I just got these on the local market. They have that little spring there, so they're self-opening. So if I have to adjust my position, I just let go of the grip. So they're very, very good for removing the uh, the trouble. But I find this gizmo here even better. You've got that powerful grip there, which jams these shut, so you've got a really tight grip on the treble, and you can manoeuvre it much more easily than the other, the others which I've just demonstrated. A wonderful gadget, and again, it improves the confidence when you're handling pike. Now hopefully it will never happen that the pike has swallowed your sardine or your lamprey or whatever you've had on and it's gone down through the opening at the back of the mouth into the digestive tract. There is no way you're going to get that out without damaging the pike, particularly if you're using trebles. Try as you might, uh, you're just going to rip the thing to bits. So. The only way to deal with it, that situation is to cut through the wire trace and leave the trebles in the pike's digestive system where hopefully they'll be dissolved by the acid of the stomach. But it's a situation really you shouldn't find yourself in. So you need a big pair of bolt cutters or wire cutters so that you can reach in and chop through the wire trace, sacrificing your trebles, just leaving them in the pike, and hopefully the pike will survive. So I've got a pair of these, hopefully I'll never have to use them, but I've got them just in case. And they are quite expensive things to buy made of very hard steel which of course when it gets wet or damp rusts very easily but well I'm optimistic that whatever situation I come across that that there will stand me in good stead and I'm looking at that landing net I think a 30 inch might be better. Just on the off chance that I'll land some, <laughs> some massive beast.
anyway if you're going pike fishing good luck and hopefully when you put the pike back into the water they'll recover very quickly